Hi, it's Dwyer. DwyerVIP.com, GamblersAdvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. There is a great article today, April the 3rd, 2012, UnboxingScene.com, where Andy Lee's trainer, Emmanuel Stewart, talks about an upcoming fight between his fighter, Andy Lee, and middleweight champion Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Now let me just say, in addition to being arguably the trainer of the 1980s in boxing, um, and in addition to having been the trainer of not just the Cronk Gym, Thomas Hearns, Michael Moore, but also the trainer of Lennox Lewis, Jermaine Stu uh, Taylor, um, Miguel Cotto, and many others, including current heavyweight champion Vladimir Klitschko. In addition to all of that, Emmanuel Stewart, quite frankly, is perhaps the best analyst unboxing on TV. Certainly he's the best in my opinion on HBO. Right? Typically what'll happen is you'll start to watch a fight. Um, HBO seems to favor certain fighters in my opinion. And usually around the third or fourth round, Emmanuel Stewart will quietly let his opinion be known. And his opinion, quite frankly, is highly critical of some of the favorite fighters like Manny Pacquiao and others, right? Um, he will critique a fighter. He's very upfront in talking about his former fighter, Miguel Cotto, having to fight a certain style of fight to have a chance against Floyd Mayweather, right? I find Stewart to be refreshingly politically incorrect, and I find him to uh, be continually trying to analyze the game in a very honest fashion. He believes that his fighter Andy Lee has a very good chance of taking the middleweight title from Julio Cesar Chavez. I like Chavez in the fight. Let's talk about why. First, Lee is a southpaw with a very potent left hook. It's a one-punch knockout type of left hook. He's best when fighting long using his non-dominant right hand to distract an opponent before lowering the boom with his left. Right? He can knock you out with either a straight left or a left hook, but when he hits you with that hook, fighters look hurt on the way down. Right? When he has space, he is very good. He also is able to throw devastating hooks to the body with both hands. He has a very wide foot space. Now he has been carefully matched in my opinion. Might be a hard opinion, but it is what it is. He's been carefully matched with fighters who like to fight outside. They usually find themselves on the defensive because Andy Lee is offensively gifted and knows how to turn and use length, right? But he can be outboxed. I encourage everyone to look at most of the fight against Craig McEwen. I know Lee caught up with McEwen late. But I thought McEwen was methodically outboxing Lee. In fact, I thought McEwen was the better athlete in that fight. And Lee can be bullied. I encourage everyone to take a look at the last rounds of both Lee fights against Brian Vera. Right? Let me just say, the first fight Lee lost was getting hit with everything but the kitchen sink toward the end of that fight. The second fight, in particular, in the last round. I thought Lee knew he had the fight won. All he wanted to do 
was fight off his back foot. He wanted to keep the fight in the middle of the ring. And I thought he wasn't able to do so. I believe that last round is an eye opener. I believe that Brian Vera was able to gold Lee into a shootout in that last round and the action moves from the middle of the ring to the side of the ring. I don't believe that Lee is great defensively. Take a look at that last round of the first Vera fight. Look at how many flush punches land. Right? Ask yourself where is Lee's head movement? The problem with a lot of these guys who are taller than everyone else, Lee's about 6'2", which is very tall at 160, who fight at distance, is they haven't been accustomed to being close enough to their opponent where they have to move their heads, right? Lee can get hit flush, and he's not that great an athlete, right? Look at him try to move around the ring. In that last round of the Brian Vera fight, it doesn't look like you're watching Fred Astaire there, right? He's a bit awkward. His balance, in my opinion, isn't mobile balance. Now, let me just say, you know, life is unfair. Because as much as we have stories of possible DUI arrests during training camp, with Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., right? As much as we hear stories about Chavez Jr. not taking off the weight for a fight until the last 48 hours before the weigh-in, and as much as we hear that Chavez Jr. doesn't have the dedication to the sport that his father did, one of the all-time greats, right? I'll say this. In my opinion, Chavez Jr. is the better athlete than Andy Lee and Chavez Jr. who, and this fight's interesting because Chavez Jr. is actually the shorter fighter, believe it or not, right? Chavez Jr. more importantly can fight small. In other words, I believe very few people in the sport know how to dominate inside, have the inside game to literally cut off the angles and just dominate inside. Chavez Jr. is one of them. Right? You've heard me use the phrase mid-range hooker. A guy who likes to hook at arm's length. Well, move it even further inside. Right? Chavez Jr., who has a great mid-range hooking style, also can fight you up close, leaning on you. Not mid-range, but short-range. He has an excellent short game. He can put his forearms and his head literally right up on your chest and still get leverage. Look at how he bullied Sebastian Zvik. Look at how at times he bullied Marco Antonio Rubio, right? You're talking about a guy who not only hits you up close with punches, but unlike Andy Lee, whose power you feel in his punches, with Chavez Jr., it's more like George Foreman. He's also bodying you. You're also getting hit with shoulders. You're getting pinned on the side of the ropes. Now, a guy like Andy Lee, in my opinion, won't be able to get leverage on his punches with Chavez Jr. up on his chest. The problem with these long range guys who operate from distance is when you get up on their chest they're so accustomed to doling out punishment at long range, they don't know how to get leverage with you right up on them. Look at Alan Green against Andre Ward. I seem to be the only person who enjoyed that fight, but Ward masterfully took away Alan Green's power 
because even though Green had a knockout punch, it was a knockout punch at arm's length. He didn't have a punch with the guy up on him, right? And Chavez Jr. is the kind of guy who even if you tie up one arm while he's up on you, right, literally digging hooks to your body and throwing weight around, he's a master inside. He'll know what to do with his free hand, right? I believe he's going to get inside on Andy Lee. And I believe he's going to go to town. I believe Chavez Jr. is just too athletic and too good inside for Andy Lee. I'll concede that Andy Lee always has a puncher's chance in every fight he's in, right? With punchers, they can quickly offset disadvantages <coughs> just by landing a haymaker. No question about it. But I'm expecting Chavez Jr. to win this fight. I'm expecting him to tire out Andy Lee, to literally be up on his chest, get inside, and fight the fight he did against Sebastian Zvik and against Rubio, right? Let me also say this too about Chavez Jr. He has had fights. The John Duddy fight, where he's actually shown an ability to fight off of his back foot. Don't sleep on his left hook, right? He has power. He does have hand speed. But I believe here, all he has to do is get inside to bully Andy Lee. I don't believe Andy Lee has the foot speed to get out of the way, as I believe Sergio Martinez would be able to do. Right? And I don't believe Andy Lee bends at the waist well enough to make it hard. <clears throat> for Chavez Jr. to find his head like Sergio Martinez would. As much as I worship Emmanuel Stewart and respect him tremendously, I'm going to disagree with him here. I believe Julio Cesar Chavez more likely than not successfully defends his title against Andy Lee. If I were betting the fight, I'd take Chavez Jr. to win the fight Note that many of Chavez Jr.'s recent bouts have gone the distance, so the knockout prop is always a bit problematical. Right? I would take Chavez Jr. to win the fight, straddled against Andy Lee by KO. What I don't see is Andy Lee winning a decision. I just get the feeling that Lee is great from distance. And Chavez Jr. is going to force him to fight the fight up close. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at DwyerVIP.com or GamblersAdvisory.com. Thanks for watching.